I've seen the leaflet. Yeah, the kids have got involved in stuff. Oh, right. so yeah, like they got their turbans on. That's cool. Yeah. Man. Looking very cute as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, what we uh, what we're trying to do is spread um, awareness of the message. We're not trying to convert people because yeah. Sikhism is not about converting people. I don't get any point if you decide to follow Sikh. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's just a, it's just about raising awareness of the message because I guess we are the fifth largest religion in the world, but not a lot of people know about us. So, okay. Um, the message is very simple. That there's one creator who made all of us. But in, in, a, in a sort of this different twist on the way, we believe that it's not just outside the world, he's here, right. everywhere, all around us. So it's kind of like energy, yeah? It's so basically everything is energy, so he's all around us, like he is the energy that sustains the world, yeah? And that, um, the light of that one is inside me and you and everybody, equally, yeah? So it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Hindu, Christian, or you know, gay, straight, whatever, makes a difference to him, yeah? Or he's got to say him, makes a difference to that, to that one. Yeah, we're all one in that sense. Yeah, okay. we're connected by that energy as well. And that finally, that actually, there's a spot at the top of our head. Yeah, you can't yeah. see mine, but we can see yours. Yeah, <laughs> right at the top. <laughs> that that spot is basically where we can experience the one. So for us, God is not something which is to be believed in far away. Yeah. But for us, God is something that we can experience. So that's why we call it the one. It's like an energy, and basically that's like you know plugging in, and you feel charged up. And the experience is what makes you believe in God. See, before that, you can have like a little bit of doubt in it, right? Because it sounds logical, yeah, that somebody made some, somebody made the world, yeah, right. But the problem is that there's no proof, yeah. So Sikhism is all about trying to get that proof by experience, not through you know scientific arguments or whatever like that. But just literally your own, you know, like you got eyes, yeah, yeah, you can see, right. So you don't need someone to tell you you can see, you know, in it, you don't need. So same way, when you got when you can experience that one, you know, you don't need anybody to tell you what it's like. You know yourself, and it's a very blissful experience actually. It's very nice. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. N there's nothing in this world that compares to it, effectively, because it's the most amazing thing in the world. So, okay. Have you ever meditated yourself? Yes, I have. Yeah. What, what did you, you, you experience? Anything? Or? I, I think it's just a feeling of calm. Yeah, that's just, a, that's just, a, just a calmness and shutting the rest of the world out. That's a good. Just, that's a good initial stage. Yeah. And just being at, at one with yourself and totally calm. Did you feel anything else? I don't know. Right. I've not really thought about it. Any kind of any kind of bliss. I don't know, I, th I think it's relaxation. Right, okay. But I don't think I've ever been any further than that. Yeah, well, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Are you, are you still doing it or did you, did you say, oh, I've, I've had enough of all? <laughs> <laughs> I've got two small children, when do yeah. I get time? <laughs> I've got two small children as well. <laughs> Here's not an excuse. <laughs> um, okay. No, I, I agree with you. It's yeah. hard in the modern world, yeah? yeah? That's what basically Guru said to us, wake up early. Wake up earlier than the rest of your family does. Yeah. Right? And then at that time, then no one's up. Oh, the kids are asleep, yeah, thankfully. Uh, uh, you know, the, even even your partner might be asleep, but you've yeah. got that time to yourself. And uh, so for us, it's very much about the early morning time. The dawn time is like the best best time. Um, the oh yeah, I agree with that. I, I go to work very early in the morning. Do you? Oh okay. And I, I enjoy being at work before other people and getting things done at work before other people get in. Yeah, yeah. Which is very peaceful, isn't it? Yeah. But see, in that time, you could meditate. Yeah, that's that's a really you could, good idea. Fact, for example, with this music that we have here, yeah, we've got you know you could take a CD or you could download it from our channel. Like we've got yeah. this YouTube channel. You could download some MP3s from the channel, from our website, and you could just have it playing on. You know what I mean? It's like a meditation that's, thing, that's a and good it just idea. keeps your head in that place. Because yeah. when we're driving, how much time do we waste? Like half an hour here, there, we might be filling yeah. our head with foreign news yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And but it's never going to affect us. Our personal peace is going to come from inside us, isn't it? So maybe sometimes we could do that. I mean, not that I'm saying don't read the news. I, 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 yeah. I read the news, but you know what I mean. Um, just a, a little bit about the gurus, just so you know. It wasn't that long ago that the gurus came upon the earth. It's probably the youngest world religion. Uh, yeah. 2,500 years ago, Guru Nanak Dev Ji um, uh, came upon the earth and uh, we believe that he was sent uh, by God, by the one, uh, because the, the way to God wasn't really visible, wasn't manifest. Um, everybody was, uh, some people believed you should just worship him from far away. Some people believe that he's of many, many different types. The Hindus had like all the different types of gods, yeah, but not the one, do you know what I mean? So the truth was getting a bit obscured. So then Guru Nanak Dev Ji came back to bring that truth and it's like an eternal truth. But he came to kind of spread it and put it at the forefront. And the first thing he said is, is about the one. And the second thing he said is that we can connect to the one through its name. Just by calling God, we can connect to God. Yeah. So listen, you know when it says, hallowed be thy name? Yes. Yeah. That's the message. The name of God. Instead of saying, don't say God's name in vain. Yeah, that's right. Don't say it in vain. But say it in, in earnest. <laughs> you know, when, you want to get, when you want to connect to God, that's what we do. We actually just say, oh, we have a word, we use Wahiguru. 
that's how we meditate. We literally just say Waheguru, yeah, and we just call God direct. It's like you know, on the phone, okay. straight to God, yeah. Okay. And then at some point, that phone call will get through, yeah, and you get a response, and you'll be like, whoa, blown away by that response. I like, hold on, God just called me back. <laughs> um, and for us, the Guru Nanak, he travelled all over the world talking about this thing that we're all equal. Um, he travelled probably the most of any of the prophets and you know, or any of the people that have come before. Um, he travelled to Mecca, Rome, uh, Tibet, Sri Lanka, China, all these places he travelled. And everywhere he spread this message of oneness, of, of everybody should be equal, everybody should be um, free to make their own decisions in life. You know, we shouldn't be forcing things upon other people. Um, that, uh, you know, that, 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 that we could connect to the one. And a lot of people were like, you know, we don't agree with this, it's not our way. So he set up his own community back in Punjab. Yeah, uh, which is now it's it's in it's in Pakistan now, but it was Punjab was one country before. Yeah. Um, but one thing I don't know if you ever heard of this place called the Golden Temple. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You've heard of it, yeah? Golden Temple, Ram Mitzvah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. See, that oh, was yeah. made by the gurus. Yeah? yeah. The fifth guru actually. So it's like architecturally constructed by them, not by somebody who was like a Sikh, but actually the gurus themselves. Yeah. What's cool about that place is it looks like this. It's got a, a pool of water which is square, um, and roughly square, and inside that is a temple. See, the t architecturally, Guruji was teaching us something. Yeah. There's four doors to it, you see. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, God welcomes everybody. Yeah. It's got four doors to so welcome yeah. everybody from all corners, all types. Yeah, and then most importantly, there's only one way in, and that's through love. There's only one way in. Yeah, to God. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. See, and Guru Sahib, you know, five, four hundred years ago, made that place to just teach us. And the really interesting thing about that place is, which you might not know, you see how most churches and like most religious places, they're upwards. You go up some steps to get to them. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel like the the grandeur of God. You know, the big windows. Mm. Well, Guru Sahib made this whole Golden Temple lower. Yeah. So when you go outside, you have to go down the steps to get to the, yeah. uh, the Golden Temple. That was because um, to get to God, we need to have humility. We need to lower ourselves. That's the only way to find Him through love and then through becoming humble. Yeah. So He art architecturally showed us that as well. Um, right. Now, his he was actually the fifth Guru who made that place. He was actually killed by Muslim fundamentalists. Yeah. It happens sometimes nowadays as well, yeah? Yeah. Oh now, yeah. but the, the, the interesting thing is that his son didn't bear a grudge against all of Islam. Another good thing that people should bear in mind today, yeah? There are just good people and bad people. There's no religion, really. Yeah. Um, now, his son made a mosque for some poor Muslims. They didn't have a mosque to pray in. So he was like a king as well. He like, looked after an area. And they said to him, look, we haven't got a prayer place. So Guru Sahib said, oh, I'll make you one. Very unique example, isn't it? The yeah. son, his oh, father's yeah. been killed yeah. by the Muslims and yet he's making a mosque. So, um, Sikhism is very much an inclusive way to God. It's not about exclusivism. We don't say we're the best. Well, obviously, we believe that our religion is the, the clearest way for us. Hmm. Yeah? But we're not going to go out there and condemn other people for following their religion. You know what I mean? Unless it's going against morality. You know what I mean? If there's laws that people are doing stuff that's Ill immoral, and they say, oh, it's part of my religion, because I'm. Well, we don't want to. But still, we should have certain respect you know, for other people to follow their own tradition. You know? um, what you're seeing here at the moment is part of our philosophy. What yeah. we've got in the music, yeah? And it's basically for us, singing is the way to God. Yeah? Like I said earlier, calling God's name. We can also sing praise of God. So music is inherent in the Sikh faith. The Gurus actually were master, instrument, master musicians as well. And some of the stuff you see here, like those, the tabla there. Um, and my, uh, I think you'll see somebody else going to play some uh, traditional instruments, string instruments. They were made, some of them were invented by the Gurus. But the, the key thing about the music is, Guru Sahib actually made this text for us. Of what we follow now. That text is uh, divided by music. It's not divided by chapters. Yeah? Right, okay. So there's no chapters on it. It's not like one yeah. chapter says, what is God? How should I live? That kind of thing. There's no chapters, yeah? It's music meant to be sung. Why? Because by singing, you find God. Guru didn't just want to give us a book that we read and then go and find God afterwards. Guru said, look, sing these words. This is the way. It's not just showing you the way, it is the way. So it's both the wisdom and the poetry. So, I mean, the, the free food also, it's kind of made by them as well. Now the idea of the free food is, um, you and I are equal, yeah? yeah. Right? We believe that at a spiritual level we're equal. But society tells us we're not equal. Yeah? Society is all about dividing people up into different places. The rich people eat together, poor people eat together. Yeah? So the langar was like a way to put that into practice, the equality. So now everybody's having the same food, yeah? at the same level. There's no distinction. So if you come to a Gurdwara, for example, like they've got an open day here coming up on the, first, on the 14th of September, uh, next Saturday. You'll see the same thing, free food, but always equality. So it's like basic human right to have food, that's covered. Basic right to have equality, that's covered. And also, if you want to learn how to serve people, because there's joy in service, yeah? But we'll yeah. never realize. Oh yeah. We'll never realize because unless sometimes we do it, we don't realize the joy of it. 
So that's a place to just go and serve. Let's say you decide, you know what, I don't particularly want to go and eat there all the time. I'm just going to go wash dishes for all these people, yeah? You could do that. You know, you could learn about it. So, um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's uh, we have a YouTube channel and you can find out more online. Wow. It's all in English. Yeah. I mean, uh, have you um, have you got any questions or something that, you know, something that strikes you, like or from here maybe, something you're not... No, no, I've, I've really enjoyed coming. It's, it's, it's got a really good vibe. The whole event's got a really good vibe. Oh, thanks. I think if it hadn't... We'd have probably sort of wandered in and wandered back again, but we've spent far more time here yeah. than we'd probably spend anywhere else. Wow. Because we've had some food, we've sat and watched the music, the kids have had the turbans put on, I've spoken to a few, few people yeah. about... The, the I wasn't really sure about the turban thing. You so, why so do you wear turbans? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, you know, the, uh, that, um, I talked to you about the... Um, I didn't talk to you about the ninth guru. He did something really amazing. This yeah. is where the turban stems from, yeah? Um, at that time, the Islamic fundamentalists that ran India, they wanted to convert everybody to Islam. Yeah. And they went and got all the top Hindus for to convert them. They came to our guru for help. There's a ninth guru at that time. And they asked him, look, would you help us? We've been converted by force. The ninth guru said, yes, I will. And um, he offered a challenge to the Mughal kingdom. He said, if you can convert me, you can convert them. Yeah. If you can't convert me, you can't convert them. And the Mughals were like, wow, you know, two in one chance. If we convert him, not only do we get all the Hindus, we also get all the Sikhs. Yeah. So it was a big chance. So they went for it, but they tortured him. They did whatever they could and they couldn't convert him. When he was being, he was beheaded in Delhi. And if for that, he basically saved Hinduism from extinction. Now, that's a great thing. No, no prophet or anybody in the past ever given their life for people of another religion, to follow their religion, for freedom of, freedom of faith, you know? Yeah. Um, however, when he was beheaded, there was a whole bunch of Sikhs that were in Delhi at that time. And the Mughals asked, um, are there any Sikhs here today? Obviously, there's going to be death at the end of that question, mm. yeah? And a lot of them got scared and they, they hid back. Yeah, Because that time Sikhs didn't have a special form. They look like anybody else. Yeah. Now, Guru, Guru, his son, the 10th Guru, decided that from now on, Sikhs should have a special form. So wherever they go, they, get, they stand out. And because we're supposed to defend people, it yeah. works both ways. You see, we've got this sword that we carry on us. Yeah. Uh, and that's a sword of defense. So we, I, I'm honor bound to defend you if you're being attacked. So, so if anybody's being attacked, we're honor bound to defend them. We're like God's policemen. Yeah? Now, how do you know who to ask for help? With well, yeah. a policeman, you can see him, you've got uniform, yeah. yeah? So we've got this form in order for people can ask us for help. But also, if we're doing something wrong, and you see somebody doing something, you can say to me, hold on, you're supposed to be a seat. Why are you doing this? You see? Well, okay. If you catch me with a pint in my hand, yeah. drinking, you can say, hold on, that's not right. You're not meant to be drinking in a seat, do, yeah? Do you, do you not drink alcohol? No, we don't no, drink alcohol. Okay. Because we're armed. You can't have a policeman drunk oh, on course, duty. Yeah, of course, yeah? yeah. So we don't drink, yeah? yeah. Um, what else? You might see somebody robbing. But he's got a turban on a beard, and you might say, hold on, you're not allowed to rob. Or somebody begging. We're not allowed to beg either. We have to work, you know, for our, uh, for our living and then share that with people. So basically, it's like, it's like multiple facets to it. But the key thing is that we stand out, yeah? And we're not afraid of, like, saying that we are Sikhs of our Guru. Mm. Because otherwise people get a bit scared sometimes. You know, it's a hard line to walk sometimes, yeah? And they want to just blend into the public. So we're not allowed to be average, Joe. Yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. yeah. There's a... Uh, because, you know, the way to God is quite unique. I'm just um, wondering where, where my wife is. Yeah, they're just right behind you. Oh, they're there. there they are. They're looking very cute, your kids. <laughs> Everybody says that. I yeah. have to live with them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. My, my people said that about my oh, kids as well. Do no, they need to take their turbans back? No, no. I think they take them. Oh, lovely. They can take them. So you can oh, take a photo when they go. The the day. All right. They're on, right. on all the seats for the day. Ha, you know, if you want to come down on the uh, 14th, bring them along. Bef don't, don't have lunch that day. Come around to us and we'll, feed, we'll, know, we'll have lunch together. Yeah. It's up to you That's guys. Very nice There's a date there. Hello. You can you can you know maybe sit down and enjoy some meditation as well. So, all right. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, really nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Check us out Thanks. online on YouTube. All right. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye.